Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, my name is Michael Kelly. I'm a technical sales engineer here at Azure Ireland. Um, today, the plan is to cover open source widgets in Web App Builder. Um, so, the plan is to show you how to get the developer version of Web App Builder, which you need for these open source widgets up and running. Um, to show you the differences between the Access Online version um, of Web App Builder and the developer version of Web App Builder. Uh, to show you where you can find open source widgets to, to actually use in the developer edition without, without having to do any coding yourself. Um, then I'll just show you how to configure and deploy apps. Like configure, configuring your apps is pretty much the same as you, you would have done in Access Online. Deploying apps is slightly different. It's more like uh, the old flex way of doing things. Um, you just deploy it to a web server. Um, then the plan is to just give you a brief summary um, of what we've covered uh, and have a Q&A at the end. Um, so just to start as well, um, in Access Online, there, there, there's lots of out-of-the-box widgets as it is. Um, and if these cater for your needs, uh, then I'd recommend that you just go and use Access Online because there's no need for you to use Web App Builder uh, Developer Edition. Um, and if this is the case, we've, we have a webinar from just over a year ago um, that you could take a look at and it goes into a bit more detail in, in that workflow. Um, but if not, today, um, today we'll cover open source widgets um, and hopefully it will benef benefit you in some way. Um, so I suppose we'll just get stuck in straight away and we'll get set up with the developer edition of Web App Builder. So I'm just going to share my screen here. Okay. Um, so you'll see here I'm um, I'm on the website developers.actjs.com, and this is where you'll find the download for the developer edition of Web App Builder. Um, so here I'm going to log in with my account. And this this would be the same login as your uh, as your access online account. Once once you sign in, then uh, you can go up here to the top right hand corner, uh, and you'll see a downloads icon. So if you click on that, you ha you get all the downloads for all the APIs and SDKs and all the developer stuff that the developers need. Um, but all we actually need here uh, is to download the developer edition of Web App Builder. So we can ignore everything else and we can choose Web App Builder. Now in this case, you'll see that there is lots of different versions. And the latest version is version 2.2. Um, and the one thing you have to be careful about um, is you need to line up the widget versions that you have, that they're compatible. So they'll be compatible with a particular version of Web App Builder. Um, and in the case of some of the open source widgets, a lot of them are, are developed for version 2.1. So for that reason, um, I'd recommend that if you're, if you're going to download it, go for 2.1 for now. Like these widgets get updated a lot as well, but um, it's very hard for, uh, for people to keep up with the versions as they come out quite often. Um, so in this case, we're going to go for version 2.1. Um, and to download it, then you just click the download button. Now I've I've downloaded it already, um, and I have it here on uh, on my computer. So once once you download it, you'll get this zip folder here. So it's Access Web App Builder, uh, and then the version number after it. So what you need to do is just unzip that version. So you can use the extract all from uh, that's included in Windows, or you can use something like Seven Zip to extract to a folder. Um, and in that folder, there's another folder called Web App Builder for Access. So if you open that, then this is this is what you need here. Um, this is all files, uh, files and folders that you need for the developer edition of Web App Builder to work. So I've I've unzipped that already, uh, just in a slightly different folder, uh, and I've renamed it to just Web App Builder Dev 2.1. Um, 
and in that then I have all my files. Uh, so that I just kind of cleaned up the folder a little bit, um, and it, this is this is the root folder here. Um, so once you have that, then you can just double click on the startup.bat file, uh, and that opens up a command window like this, and it'll open up um, a browser window as well. So in this case, I've set it up here already, but what I'm going to do is just open an incognito window so none of my cookies or anything are stored and you'll see what, what it will look like uh, initially when you go into it um, so in this case I'm going to set it up with my Azure Ireland account um, you'll be able to find this um, if you log into your account so say rts.com you log in you use the same logins again And this is where um, this is the, the URL that you'll need to input here. So it's in there already. Um, if you want to, you can use HTTPS here as well. So if you're going to purely use HTTPS, uh, which I would recommend everyone to do, uh, then put HTTPS here. Uh, but what that limits you to, if you want to, basically, if you put in HTTPS here, you can't use uh, HTTPS services. Uh, and unfortunately not everyone has gone on to HTTPS, fully gone on to HTTPS yet so some servers don't uh, have HTTPS set up uh, and so for this reason I'm going to just leave it as HTTP for now um, because I want to use some services that are HTTP later on so once you have that done you click continue um, and you'll, be, you'll get this option to log in to, with your Access Online account so if you click approve, uh, you can just click approve, and you'll actually get another screen. Um, so because I've set this up already, it's just slightly different. But what you need to do is you need to go into my content page uh, in Access Online, and you need to add an item, uh, an application. And in here then, for the URL, you need to copy and paste um, this URL here. So I'm going to remove the Web App Builder at the end of it uh, and just leave the HTTP, the address name of my computer, uh, and then 3344. Um, I'd recommend that you don't use localhost because uh, then other people could potentially get in. You can just give it a, a normal name. Uh, I'm just going to call it uh, Web Builder Dev Edition and copy the same tag in there. So once you do that, uh, you click the Add Item button. And in fact, I'm actually going to put in uh, Web Builder here. And yeah, so once you have that done, um, that's all you need to do really. Um, yeah, so we can just add the item here. And once you've done that, uh, that'll kind of register your developer edition uh, with your actress online account. Uh, and you can go into your settings then, um, and what you need to get is your app registration. So what you'll be asked for is your app ID so if you click register, um, again you put in this address here and you're recommended to put in both your HTTP and HTTPS uh, addresses here as well. Uh, so once you've done that, you click register uh, and you get shown this app ID and that's all you need to import then into uh, into the next uh, into the section that will appear in your in your web app below. Um, dialog. Now it's it skipped it for me, um, but that's that's the the code that you need to get. Um, so once you're in there, you get this um, this page here, uh, and you're probably not familiar with this because 
you don't actually see this in ArcGIS Online. Um, this is specific for the developer edition. Um, and it literally is just a place where your where your apps are listed. Uh, so you can see I have a 2D app here, uh, two 2D uh, apps. Uh, you can filter them by 2D, 3D, or look at them all. Uh, there's various different ways of filtering and organizing your data uh, or your, your apps. Um, but really what, what you want to do here uh, is create new apps. Um, you can import apps from, from your Access Online account as well, uh, if you want. Um, but the one thing to be careful of here is, again, you have to keep the additions uh, kind of lined up. Otherwise, uh, for example, the, say, say I was to go back to version 1.2 of Web App Builder, um, and I try to um, and I try to open uh, an app that was developed with the 2.2 um, version. Uh, there's going to be widgets and configurations that are not compatible with the older version, so that's just something you need to be careful for and um, be careful with if, if you're doing that. Um, so that's essentially how you, you get it up and running anyway. Um, you always need to uh, leave your uh, command open uh, because this is this is essentially running a server in the background. It's using Node uh, Node.js. Um, so we'll go in here and we'll create a new app just to show you what, give you a feel for what it looks like. Uh, you can use templates or you can just, just use the defaults. In this case, we're just going to use a, the default 2D app. Uh, and give it, a, give it a name. And this will create, uh, create an app for you. And you'll be familiar with this because this is the exact same interface uh, as you see in in ArcGIS Online. Um, and if we go into the widget list here and we go and add add a widget, you can see that we've you know we've lots of different widgets here. But if we were to compare this with uh, with ArcGIS Online, so I'm going to go back into my ArcGIS Online account here, and we can compare versions. So I'm going to create. Uh, uh, web app builder app, uh, which can make call comparison, and we can look at them side by side here. So this is the same box that we'll see, um, but there are. Uh, differences in the widgets. So I'm just trying to compare them there and find something that's actually not in the latest version. I know one of the features in the latest version of Access Online uh, is the edit widget and that it covers um, if you have um, related data it will it will um, you'll be able to edit related data. Um, so these actually look very similar. Um, but yeah, in general, the, the the widgets in the developer edition are going to be just slightly. They're going to be there's going to be a little bit of a lag behind uh, the version in Access Online, uh, and typically the um, the developer edition of Web App Builder comes out about a month after the Access Online releases. So if you want to use a widget in um, from the latest release of Access Online. In the developer edition, you have to. There's just a little bit of lag time there that you have to wait. Um. So I suppose going back to here, um, what we want to do is add some add some widgets. We want to get some open source widgets and and add them. So. We want to. We need to find some widgets, and where where can we find them? And the answer is typically they're found in uh, in GeoNet. So if we go to uh, this, is just a, I have a couple of tabs open here that are just a little bit relevant. Um, so usually the the latest versions are um, they're always up on the ArcGIS blog. So if you go to <coughs> blogs.arcgis.com, 
for such as we for for such actors. Um, these kind of announcements are always made through there, uh, particularly with like Access Online. Uh, but the developer editions are always announced through here as well, and they'll show you what the, the latest features are as well. Um, but yeah, what we want is to find some open source widgets, and there's a really good uh, resource list available in GeoNet uh, that's been put together by Rebecca. So um, this is a list of essentially all the different um, web app builder widgets that you can that you can find. Um, and so there's a there's a guy called um, Robert Chiklin who develops a lot of these, uh, and he has. He has another. He has another page himself, and these are literally. This is literally a list of widgets that he has developed uh, that can be used with uh, with Web App Builder. And you'll see here he has the version as well. So the reason I downloaded the 2.1 version is because these widgets were developed against uh, against the 2.1 uh, version of the developer edition. Now you have a couple of different options here. Um, he has live preview sites, so if you want to just go and look at the preview site just to get a feel of what the, the widget looks like, uh, you can do so. So this is a, an enhanced search widget that he has, um, and it's 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 very good. You know, it's it's, it's very good. Um, so you can select uh, select by inputting a shape. Uh, you can put it in by value, um, or you can apply a search distance if you want. Uh, so it's it's very advanced. Uh, it's very advanced workflows um, that that m might be needed for some of your business cases. Uh, and also with these, uh, he has some documentation. So if you click into any of these. He has a page uh, dedicated to that particular um, widget, and he also has uh, help pages um, for those widgets as well. So you can go here and you know see how how you configure them and what the actual capabilities of them are. But ultimately, what you want to do is download them because um, that's what you need to do if you want to use them uh, and play around with them yourself. So. Within here, so once you click into the widget itself, um, there's an option down here to download it. So you'll download an attachment like that, and you probably saw them earlier. So if I go back into this open source widgets page, I've downloaded um, a lot of these widgets, and so all, all of these were developed by uh, Robert Barr, this uh, eDraw widget. Um, so that this is just another widget that I picked out of. Um, the, the list that Rebecca has put together here. So there's, there's a draw widget listed in here, which I, which I thought was quite nice. Um, so once you download them, then uh, again you have to unzip them like with the uh, web app builder. And once you once you do that, uh, you'll just end up with these folders here. Um, now I'm just going to update this eDraw folder. Um, I just don't like the long name. So what I'm going to do is delete that, just change the name of it, uh, and I'm going to copy these uh, unzipped folders, and I'm going to go into my uh, my version of Web App Builder. And what I'm going to do as well is just show you what happens in uh, in the command as well. So if I go into this is the startup file that I I started up Web App Builder with. Uh, and if I go into, um, there's a particular folder that you have to go to um, for it to work, and the folder is in uh, client, uh, SD map, and then widgets. So this is for 2D uh, widgets. If you want to use 3D widgets, you'll have to go um, into uh, SD map 3D. All these widgets are for 2D, so I'm going to go into the 2D version uh, and I'm going to paste these. And you'll see here that um, 
you're going to get this notice here to say, um, you know, insert HTML.URL button. And these are all the widgets that I'm just after adding. And there's, I'm after adding nine different widgets. Uh, and when you're listed here, there's eight listed. Uh, and the reason for that is because, uh, well, what you need to do, what you need to make sure of is that uh, within these folders, this is what you need to see. You need to see a structure like this. So you need like your widget.js, your manifest.json, your config.json, and uh, there's some required file, file, files like that. Uh, in the case of the problematic one, we got a message here, uh, and it was to do with the e-search, actually. So if we go into the e-search widget, you'll see the reason for it, and it's because um, it's actually in the subfolder. So we need the subfolder in, in the root of it. So what I'm going to do is delete that and copy all the or cut all these back of back a folder. And what I'm going to do is actually take it out again. I'm going to take that folder out, uh, paste it on my desktop, and then what I'm going to do is open up that folder again and paste it back in. And you'll see if we open up the uh, the command again, you'll see the C search has come in then this time. Um, and I think we just see what E draw. Yeah, so I think everything else has come in as expected. So we have we have nine different widgets that have been added. So you'll know if if you see a notice like this, you'll know the widget has come in uh, as you'd expect. Um, and then to see them, you literally just go into your, your version of Web App Builder and you can click on Add again and all your different widgets will have been added. So I've configured, I've configured an app myself with, with purely with these open source widgets. Um, and what I'm going to do is just go through some of the functionalities that these have. So the first one uh, I'm going to use is uh, URL button. And so what this does is it's literally just a hyperlink to a website, except it's a widget. So I'm going to add that. Go back here. So where I want to put that is here. I'm going to refresh again. You know, usually have to refresh, but just in this case, I'm gonna. Okay, so there seems to be something going on there. So what I'm gonna do is just close that uh, and close my command again. And so what this does is close down the developer edition of Web App Builder. I'm gonna go back to the root folder of my developer edition and just click on the startup.bat again. That'll open up this uh, command. And we'll also, uh, it'll also open up uh, a hyperlink. So I'm gonna open that here. And you will see your default to the app here, so I'm just gonna go in and edit that again. And start adding in some widgets. So hopefully this time it will work. So there's my URL link button. And yeah, so this time it's working as expected. The last time I was clicking OK and it wasn't doing anything. So sometimes when you add widgets, you might just have to restart like that. Um, so it's no harm to, to see that happen. Um, so what I'm going to use for this widget is, uh, what I want to open is just the Ezra Island website. So I put in my hyperlink, uh, and what I want to do as well is just change the icon of the widget. So click OK. And 
and in this case I'm just going to go to uh, my blogs and my webinars and I have an icon here that I want to use for uh, particularly for this for this uh, webinar so I'm going to accept that and click OK and so what this does, when I click here now, I literally just get a pop-up. Uh, now in this case it was blocked, but um, once you allow the pop-up, it'll open up uh, a hyperlink to whatever web page that you want. So that's the first uh, widget that I wanted to add. Um, and what I'm going to do as well is just change the theme around here. So the theme that I want is the tab team. So I'm going to change the tab team, and actually when I did that, my widget is after being removed. So I'm going to add in that widget again. Um, actually add it in here. Okay, so we have that added in again, um, and I actually used the wrong icon, I want the white icon. Okay, so the next one then, what I want to do is, um, I'm going to associate this with the web map, so this is what you typically do to select your web map. And I have a particular one, so it's Web Developer Edition, Win Friends in Ireland. So this is the, the, the web map that I'm going to use. Uh, and what I want this widget here to do is just turn an, on and off a layer. So in order to do that, uh, well, I'm going to just save this uh, app as it is. And I'm going to add in another widget here. Uh, and what this is going to do uh, is just toggle a layer on and off. So it's called the layer toggle. Uh, and what I want to do is turn on the weeds, wind speeds. Uh, so when I click this, uh, it's going to turn on the wind speeds. And I also want to change the icon for this. So I have this um, icon for wind. And so what this will do is actually turn on turn on the layer. So you can see it's just loading here at the moment, and my layer turns turned on. So if I turn this off again. I just have to click the layer toggle button. So it just toggles on and off one particular layer. And the third widget I want to add uh, is the elevation profile. So this again is one of Robert's uh, widgets. Uh, and there's a couple of different things you can alter here. You can see, you can change how the, um, the chart will display. You can change the default line. Uh, etc. Um, and in this case I'm just going to leave it as it is um, and just click OK. You can change the, uh, the service that it uses as well. So in this case it's using the default access online um, elevation service. And so what this does is you can click uh, anywhere on the map and it will create an elevation profile. And one of the things I like about this is that it actually works for uh, for the sea as well. So it'll show you the, the depths of uh, the sea as well. So as we go along here, you can see the red, uh, the red X that marks where specifically where that location is. So you can see as soon as I hit land, um, the elevation is more than, more than zero. Um, another thing I liked about this was that you could uh, put it over the mountains here as well. So I'm going to clear it and we'll go again. So if I go over the mountains here, you can clearly see that the mountains, because the wind, because of the wind speeds, but you can see the elevation in those mountains as well. So at the at the, the most red uh, areas, you can see you're on the top of a top of a mountain. OK, 
Okay, so apparently my screen is stalled. Um, let me just get that going again. Okay, that should be shared there again. So I'm not sure where I was back to, but I'll just show you the, the, the couple of widgets that I've created so far. Um, so the first one was this um, this URL widget, which just opens a URL. Um, so just check, don't check here again. Okay, grand. Uh, I think we're sorted now anyway, so that's good. Um, so yeah, the first widget I added was this uh, URL, it was a URL um, I'll just show you what it looks like. So, first widget I added was this URL link button, and so this just links to uh, a URL that you put in. Uh, the second one was this layer toggle widget, uh, and the third one was um, elevation profile. So, if I go back here, uh, I'll just show you what I did with them. So this Azure N one, I changed the icon of it, uh, and I changed the, the link address. Uh, the second one was this layer toggle. So what this does is just toggle this particular layer here uh, on and off. Uh, and then the third one was the elevation profile. So that was my third, the third widget that I added. So just to show you what to do in the actual app, um, the first one just opens up a website. In this case, the pop-up is blocked, but we can add it again. We can just open up the, the pop-up. Uh, the second one turns on and off the layer, so it just toggles the layer on and off. Uh, and the third one is this elevation profile widget. And so this kind of it looks quite similar to um, if, if any of you have used the elevation uh, template in in Actress Online, it's kind of a similar interface to it. It uses the same widget, uh, except you can use it in Web App Builder as well. Uh, and so in this case here, I'm showing the, the elevation uh, across this mountain range here. Uh, and you can see where the wind speeds uh, are, are high correlate to uh, where the top, tops of the mountains are. And just to show you the C then as well, uh, I like looking at the, um, I'm going to clear that and go back. And we can see the elevation of the C here then as well. So it goes down to nearly 3,000 meters. Okay, so there are the three uh, widgets, widgets that I wanted to show uh, in that section. So they're, they're the on-screen widgets. Um, and what you can set up then is side-screen widgets as well, so these widgets then on the side. Um, so to do them, uh, I'm going to go into this widget controller here, and I'm going to remove the legend and the layer list that are in there already. And the first widget I'm going to add is just a base map uh, gallery. But again, this is a uh, this is an enhanced base map gallery. So this is one created by Robert again, and um, and you can add you can add in and out uh, whatever. By de by default, it will open, it will add all the base maps in your um, in your default gallery, um, and you can remove any any ones that you want. So I'm going to just. Uh, Go for the basics. Delete all of these. Uh, we'll leave in Marcini. And so what this then does is it gives you the base map gallery. Now this isn't actually the enhanced base map gallery. Um, this is the so the enhanced one is down here at the bottom. So that's the one I actually want. So th this is kind of showing you the difference between um, the widgets. So the widget there at the moment is the one that comes by default, uh, and this is the enhanced version. Uh, 
And you'll see the differences now in a minute um, once we compare them. So this is what the, the enhanced one. So this is what the default base map gallery looks like. And if you look at the enhanced one, what you can do is uh, compare them. So essentially what it does is uh, I'm going to just toggle off this uh, this wind layer now as well so we can see this properly. Um, but if we want to add in the open street map, what it does is kind of overlays the two of them um, and you can choose the transparency that's been used, which uh, which base map is more prominent. So you can either go for you know your open street map or your your dark grey canvas or in between. So that's quite a nice uh, enhancement to what's there already. Uh, so I'm going to remove the default one and just keep the enhanced version on. The second widget I want to add then is this uh, bookmark widget. So again, we have an enhanced bookmark widget that's been developed. And what this does is it just gives you a little bit more control over your bookmarks. So by default, you have your web map bookmarks, and uh, they're added in by default. Um, but you can also add in folders yourself um, and subfolders as well. So in this case, um, I think I'll just use the default ones just to save me adding in lots of different bookmarks. But you can, if you want to, say, add another uh, bookmark into the Canada sites, it uh, gives you the option to scroll through your map. Let's say we're going to add in Toronto here. So we can add this in as Toronto. Uh, and so that's the kind of control you have over um, uh, over your bookmarks. Then. So if we click OK, what this bookmark look like, this widget looks like is it gives you a list of all your, your web map bookmarks, but also any bookmarks that you add in from uh, the widget itself. Um, also, the user can then go in and add in their, their, own, uh, their own bookmarks. So let's say I was going to put in Galway. And zoom to that location and just add in a, a bookmark. Okay, so that didn't seem to get added in. I'm going to save this first. Yeah, I think what you need to do is actually launch the app, uh, and then it will allow you to uh, to add in uh, any kind of bookmarks for yourself. Now you, you actually have to deploy the app, so we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll get to that in a while. Um, but just for the moment, we'll, we'll skip by that. Right, so um, so that's two apps uh, or two two widgets then in in our sidebar, um, and the third one I particularly like it's um, it's just a pop up widget, so you can get a pop up panel, um, and I'm just going to use the default settings, but what it does is it lets you just select features on the map, so let's say in this case now I just have. Um, I have wind farms, but it gives you instead of showing the pop up. So if I, if I were to exit out of that that widget and click on this, all right. So it's still still showing up in the pop up. But yeah, essentially what it does is show your pop up in the side screen uh, when you click on features. So it's quite nice. It acts the exact same uh, as the the pop up that you you generally see. And it has the same kind of features, like if you click on two features at the same time, uh, you can click through them like that. There's also various, uh, like you can view it in the attribute table as well if you want, uh, and various other things that you can do. Um, so I have a fourth widget then to add in, uh, and what this is going to be is it's, it's called the eLocate uh, widget. So it's enhanced locate, 
And this is, again is is quite a nice one. Uh, so there's a good bit of configuration to this one as well. Um, let's say I was to put in Ireland. And I'm going to remove uh, the top two. By the, Robert has added in just some example uh, reference systems that you can use. Um, in this case, what I'm going to do is add in uh, ITM. And you can put in an example then as well, uh, an example location. So in this case, I'm going to put in uh, the Dublin Spire. Uh, and I'm also going to add in uh, the Irish grid. So these both reference the same uh, same location. So this is again this the this is for uh, I'm going to move them to the top. And click OK. And so what this will do then is I'm going to close some of these. So it'll allow you to input coordinates. So in this case, I can put in ITM coordinates, um, my X and my Y, and click locate. And this should bring me to uh, the spire in Dublin. Unless I put it in the wrong way around. OK, so I've put it in the wrong location. Uh, Oh my bad! I put in I put in minus by mistake. So I shouldn't put in that minus. Obviously the right hand. And same in Irish grid. Okay, so if I click on my example now and click locate, it'll bring me to O'Connell Street. Yeah. So that's where that's where the spire is. Uh, and the same thing then with the Irish grid example. So if you click on that and click locate, it'll bring you to your ITM coordinates. And again, you can use whatever kind of uh, spatial reference systems that, that you want to use here. So you can put in your lat long if you want as well. Uh, you can also put in an address. So let's say. Um, I have to put in uh, 5 New York Great Georgia Street in Dublin, given that we're close enough by there. Uh, where are we now? I'm going to go up here. I think it's around here. So, what you can do is you can limit your address search to the map extent. So, I know that Georgia Street is, I think it's this street here. Um, so, if I limit to the map extent and click locate, uh, it'll show me the various different. Uh, scores for any results returned. So th this is using the Esri World View Coder and it'll give you the score back as well as any results that are given back. So it's quite a nice feature uh, to be able to see the scores that each uh, each feature um, get. What you can also use is this inspector and this will give you an address. So if I click somewhere here on the map, it'll give me a specific address of that uh, along with coordinates. So there are the main features of the Enhanced Locate widget. Um, and I just have one final uh, widget then to add, and it's the Draw widget. And you'll notice that we have two Draw widgets here, and that's because one of them is the one that comes by default with Web App Builder, and the other one is the open source widget that, uh, that I downloaded. So I know it's this one down here, so I'm just going to select that one. Um, and in this case, I'm just going to leave the default settings. So if I click into draw now, uh, I can draw any kind of shapes. I can choose what style I want. Um, and I can edit that if I want. I can change the transparency. So I can draw anything I want uh, on, the, on the map, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, and then what it lets you do is download uh, 
download those drones. So if you click on this button here, or this one here even, if you click on the, this one, it'll export those drones. So you can import drones and you can export drones. Uh, you can copy layers as well. So if you click on the layer and you click this button here, it'll copy them. Um, and you can alter them as you want as well. So let's say I was just going to just want a, an outline for this one. And I want to make it a little bit thicker, uh, say four, then you can see it, see it behind it there. It's actually on top, so if you're not so drag and drop the, uh, you should be able to anyway. You can drag and drop the, the layers that you have in your table. And you can hide the drones then as well. Um, and yeah, you can continue to add drones as much as you want. Uh, when you export them, they get exported as JSON. Um, and that can then be imported back into the same widget. So I'm happy enough with my app now. Um, so let's say we wanted to deploy this somewhere. Uh, obviously, this is just local to my machine, um, and I can't do a huge amount with it. Uh, just locally, I want to share it with within my organization or publicly or whatever I want to do with it. Um, what you need to do then is go back to uh, the widgets that you've created uh, and just simple as you just click this download button. So this wraps everything up into um, into a folder for you. So I'll go into my downloads. Default uh, to the app. And you put that onto your web server. So once you paste that in here, you have to unzip it. So it's very similar to if, if you have if you, if you use use Flex, um, you can do that. So I'm just gonna unzip that on my desktop. See what I'll do is uh, unzip it here. Okay, so that's my, my app created, so I can just copy that. I'm going to change the name, just remove the spaces and copy that into my, uh, onto my web server. And then I'll be able to access it through um, whatever the name your computer is. But if you have a web server yourself, you'll be able to access it. Um, publicly or within your organization, depending on what way you have it set up. So in this case, um, my web map isn't public, so I'm asked for credentials. And there's all my, my apps that have been created. Um, and so they should work properly now. So for example, if I um, go to add in a bookmark here, and go away. I click plus, there's my Galway um, bookmark. So you will find things that um, that may not work as expected um, in when, you, when you're actually running the server itself. Um, you may need to actually deploy the app before like something like this might work. Uh, and it's the same with the draw widget. So my download now will work. Uh, where is I don't think it works if you're actually using using it from from this view here. So I mean it's it's very similar to Flex if you've used it before. Uh, if you haven't, then it's as simple as just you can deploy it wherever you want. You can put it onto uh, Amazon. You can host it yourself. Um, it's very straightforward to deploy once you once you have uh, your your app created. So that's that's how that's how you can um, firstly find for how you can set up the developer edition of Web App Builder. Um, 
how it compares to uh, the Arches Online version of Web App Builder, uh, how you can find widgets uh, within the community. Uh, there's lots of different resources there. Like if you look at the list that Rebecca has, uh, it's it's quite a long thread there, um, so you could spend hours looking at that. Um, and this, these these all go into other other blogs and websites as well, so it's well worth a look there. Um, you know, configuring the apps is the same as in Access Online, uh, and deploying the apps is as simple as downloading them and putting them on a web server. So, just in summary, then, um, I suppose the good things about Web App Builder are that uh, the developer edition of Web App Builder that you get a wider variety of widgets if you use the open source ones. Um, and these may align better with your business use cases. Um, and another thing that you can actually do is you can use these as a base yourself and if you want to develop on those widgets, uh, you can do that. So you can alter the source code as needs as needs be. Um, I suppose then from the disadvantages point of view, uh, it takes some time to set up initially. Uh, you have to host applications yourself. Um, there's no automatic updates to the widgets or apps uh, like with Access Online, um, and I suppose the, the open source widgets aren't supported by Esri, um, so you're kind of reliant on the community there as well. Um, so that's pretty much uh, all I, I wanted to cover today. Um, so I'm happy to take any questions. If anyone has any questions, feel free to uh, to put them up on. Um, on the questions panel there. Yeah, I'm just waiting on questions coming here, so I'll just give me one sec. Now again, um, just apologies for the for the screen there during the webinar. Uh, just a little glitch there uh, in the software. I probably should have kept a, more of an eye on the the comments view, but um, thankfully Joanne uh, alerted me to it anyway. Um, yeah, I mean everyone. Um, so I'm just being asked uh, could I share the links to the open source widgets, um, and yeah, I absolutely will. Um, plan after this is to uh, send out an email to everyone who has registered for the webinar um, and I'll include some of the resources. Um, there will be a video of this as well on YouTube, um, so I'll post this video on YouTube uh, if, you ever, if you want to go back to any of the things that I went over there um, and in that as well I'll, I'll put it up on GeoNet so we have a, an Esri Ireland uh, GeoNet uh, which I'll post it on as well. Um, and you'll, you'll see a link for that in, in the email as well. So that's I think that's as much questions as we're getting in. Uh, feel free to send me an email if you have any questions. Uh, if you think of anything after this, um, I'm more than open to, uh, to answering your emails. Um, so thanks to everyone for uh, joining me here today. Uh, hopefully you got something out of that uh, and it was useful for you. Um, and yeah, talk to you all soon.